A very good day to you and welcome to the program. It's just so good to be with you. We're standing in the middle of a beautiful forest. There's not a breath of air. It's a beautiful morning. And I have got a special message for you. A special message for you at this time when nobody knows what to do. When nobody knows who to believe. And uh, we prayed about this program just before we started making it. And one of our men said, Lord, we are living in a time when nobody knows what is the truth. There's so many different conspiracies. There's so many different opinions. People don't know what to do, whether we should go or come or hide or be exposed. Well, I've got good news for you. Jesus Christ never changes. He's the same yesterday, today and forevermore. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, Izolo namukla naparate, as we say in Zulu. Yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. Just go out at night and look up at those stars. They haven't moved. They haven't moved since the Lord said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God said one Word, and every star was put into place. So folks, I want to tell you, we need to today start to walk by faith and not by sight. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. This book never fails. This book is Jesus Christ in print. This book is the only book that you can really trust. And I really mean that with all my heart. This book was written by men. Yes, I, I grant you that. But under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. See? John even says, don't add anything to this book. Don't take anything away from this book. Otherwise, every plague in this book will come upon you. So, folks, this is the book which will give you peace. It'll give you joy. It'll give you hope. And it will give you faith. This book. I want to just uh, read one verse for you. It's found in uh, the book of Numbers in the Old Testament. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. That is a very powerful scripture. A different spirit. What kind of spirit did he have? Well, there was 12 spies, remember? They were sent into the land of milk and honey across the Jordan River into modern day Israel. Moses sent them there, one from each tribe. Ten came back with negative reports. Their giants are too big. There's too much danger there. We're, gonna, we're not going to make it. Two came back with a report of faith. I want to tell you the grapes, the bunches are so big. Two men have to carry one bunch of grapes between them on a pole. I tell you what, that land is flowing like milk and honey. Let's go in and take it immediately. That was the heart of Caleb and Joshua, the two of them. I want to tell you how much it impresses God when we trust him. And when we believe his word. Because do you know that every single man from that generation that came out of Egypt, every single one died in the desert apart from two men. Now we're talking a couple of million maybe. I don't know how many. They all died. Why did they die? Because they were bad people? No, I'll tell you why they died. Because they continued to grumble. They would not trust God. They would not believe God's promises. And they did not go across the Jordan River. They continually argued with God. I want to say to you, my friend, if you want to argue with uh, someone, argue with the devil. But don't ever argue with God because he's never lost a fight in his life. Joshua and Caleb, they obeyed what Moses had told them. You know that even Moses, that's what makes me cry. You know, I, I had a good little chat with the Lord one day. <laughs> I think you're allowed to do that. And I said, you know, Lord, that was pretty harsh what you did with Moses. Lord, Moses took a grumbling, stiff-necked people. I didn't say that, by the way. God said that. 
through the desert for 40 years. And right at the end of his life, instead of speaking to the rock, he struck the rock. Instead of saying to the people, what do you want God to do for you? He, he said, what do you want me to do with you? And because of that, you said to Moses, he's not going to cross. And he went up that mountain, Mount Nebo. And of course, we've never found his remains. Maybe God just took him home like he did with Enoch. Just translated him. But I want to tell you something, folks. God cannot contain people who will not believe him. Today, I've called this message faith. Just one word. Because without it, we cannot please God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, Without faith you cannot please Him. And he who believes must believe that He is. And that He's the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Do you know that uh, Caleb was uh, no less than um, 85 years old? When Joshua said to him, Caleb, you pick the part of the land that you want to live in. And he said, give me the big mountains <laughs> where the big giants live. Those were the descendants of Goliath. And the Bible says he went in and he cleaned it out. That place was called Hebron, by the way. That's where Abraham and Sarah and all the patriarchs were buried. We need to operate in faith in these last days. And we are in the last days. People are coming to me and are asking me, what is happening in this world? Because what is happening here, we have never heard of before. And they're quite right, because it's never happened before. The whole world has come to a standstill by a little virus. No big massive army, no missiles, no, nothing like that. Just a little virus. People are in a state of fear. What's the opposite of fear? Faith. The Lord says in 2 Timothy 1.7, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and a sound mind. We've got to walk by faith and not by sight. Why? Because that is what brings glory to God. Everything I've ever done since I've become a Christian, I've tried by, by the grace of God to do it by faith. Why? Because when it works, God gets the glory. See, people say there's no ways that that guy could have done that. And, and they're quite right. There's no ways. We were just speaking before the program. How can you feed 5,000 men for a whole weekend. I don't care who you are. Just, just think of the, of, the, of the organizing. And by the way, not 5,000 men arrived. No, 7,400 arrived. And you know something? They were all fed, the whole lot. Is that not by faith? Is that not a miracle? Now listen to this. This is a, this is a miracle. See? See, what happens with faith Faith begets miracles. Not organizations. No, 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 no. Because people sit down and they say, no, they did it themselves. The night the men arrived, the ladies, and there were many of them in the kitchen, had catered for 5,000 men. 7,400 arrived. Now, all of a sudden, you've got 2,400 more men then you catered for. Don't worry about the 5,000. Now you've got 2,400. Ask your wife if she's sitting next to you. Ask her, how would you like it if uh, I came home with 2,400 men for supper? <laughs> exactly. So what we're saying is God responds to faith. God responded to Joshua and Caleb because they believe God. They came back with a good report, not a negative report. Folks, be careful what you say. There is power in the spoken word, see? In the beginning was that? Exactly, the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God, right? John chapter 1, verse 1. Be careful. Some of us are speaking death. The devil doesn't have to even do any work. You're doing it for him. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet. Oh, I don't know what this world's coming to. I don't know what my children are going to be faced with. I don't know when this is going to stop. And we're all going to die. Stop. Stop. You're supposed to be a man or a woman who loves God. 
Jesus never said anything to me about that. Did he say it to you? No. So why are you talking about it? It's presumption. The same thing applied to us. Okay, we were expecting 5,000 men for the weekend. 7,400 arrived. 2,400 more than the ladies had catered for. I mean, that's an army. So the ladies came to me and they said, Angus, please tell the men just to go easy with the food. <laughs> I was so full of the Holy Spirit. I was so, you know, I'm such a naive person. Here I am supposed to be a man of faith. I didn't know if anybody was even going to come to the conference. We weren't, uh, we didn't have any under, people underwriting us. It wasn't the Enchia Kerk of South Africa or the Baptist Union or the Presbyterian Church. No, it was just us, a couple of farmers. And they came, 7,400. So I got up there, I was so full of faith. I said, I've got a message from the, <laughs> from the kitchen. Eat as much as you can. Well, I mean, you can imagine what happened. I mean, there's some big boys there. These boys from the Free State, of Os Durant and all his mates, I mean, they'd eat anybody out of house and home. Sorry, Os. But folks, I want to tell you that we collected 36 baskets of leftovers after that weekend. What does that mean? It means we fed them three meals. And every meal we collected 12 baskets of leftovers. If you go to the Bible, you see when Jesus fed the 5,000, how many baskets did he pick up afterwards? Did they, the disciples collect 12 baskets? So three meals times 12, 36 baskets. That's exactly what we picked up. You know, my, my good friend, his oldest son is married to my youngest daughter, old Peter. He was, uh, he had a yellow bib on. He was directing traffic. He's got a real servant's heart. He was trying to direct the, the, the cars with the whole team. We were in the prayer, prayer room early on the Sunday morning for the last service. We were in deep intercession and he came through the door. Now he wouldn't normally do a thing like that and the tears were running down his face. And I thought maybe some child had been knocked over or there'd been a car accident. No, he said, Angus, I want to tell you, we've just got the, the stats from the kitchen. 36 baskets of leftovers, three meals, 12 baskets a meal. That's God. One genuine miracle equals a thousand sermons. That's what we say here at Shalom. Because we've seen it happen not once, not twice, for 41 years. And as we get in older and as we expand in, the miracles are getting bigger, not smaller. See, but the Lord says, be it according to your faith. If you can't trust God with what you've got, he won't give you any more. See, that's what happens. That's why some guys, they uh, actually use that uh, promise from God in the wrong way. It's like an insurance agent. You put in so much and God will give you so much back. But that's not the principle. The principle is you give because you love God. Now, Jill and I gave everything to the Lord when we became Christians. The farm, the ministry, everything we have to this day. And God just keeps giving it back. And the more we give out, the more we give back. But remember, and this is very important, we don't give in order to receive. We give because we love God. That's why we give. And we also love people, right? And then God in return, because he's a giver himself. You see, God's nature is giving. God's not a taker. He's a giver. He gave his only begotten son. What's the most important or the most well-known scripture verse in this whole book of 66 books? It's John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he, listen for it, he gave his only begotten son. That's Jesus. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The more you give to God, the more he gives back. So Joshua and Caleb went in and they came back with a good report. See, the other 10 came back with a bad report. So what happened? The other 10 died in the wilderness because they did not believe God. That's the biggest insult you can ever give to God. You know, I'm talking to a young couple there. You've got some children, right? 
How would you feel, sir, if your little boy or your little girl, maybe four or five years old, came to you and said, Dad, are we going to have any supper tonight? I think you'd be quite hurt, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say, but son, have you ever gone hungry before? No, Dad. So why are you asking me that? See, he's not trusting, he's not trusting you, is he? And that's hurting you. When you don't trust God and you start trusting the COVID-19 and you start trusting the epidemic and you start trusting all the lies that have been spoken about it right around the globe, does that give God any glory? Does that make God happy? No. You see, we respect the authorities. We, are, we, are, we respect science. We respect the doctors. We respect the government. Of course we do, but we trust God, see? Until God says so, you see? But God, you know that word, but God, see? So they say, well, we've got no hope. We say, but God, see? This coronavirus will be here for another 10 years, but God, see? And that's how you live. Most people are dying out of fear. They are getting so full of fear. You see, what fear does, it makes a beautiful seedbed for death. See? The devil comes at you with fear. God comes with, with you, to you with faith and love and hope, see? And I think what's taught me probably the biggest lesson of all, remember, I've never had the privilege of going to Bible college, and I say it's a privilege. Don't get me wrong. I would love to go to Bible college. I want you to know that. I would love to. I would have loved to have studied the Word of God. As I'm getting older, I love the Word. Sometimes Jill says to me, when are you coming out of your prayer room? <laughs> I get lost in the Bible. But I never had that privilege. But you know what I did do? I'm a farmer. And God has spoken to me and He's taught me lessons in the field through the elements that I probably, probably would never have learned in a Bible college. I have learned to walk by faith. I have learned to plant potatoes, and that's not a joke, by faith. I have learned to plant maize by faith. I have bought cattle by faith. I have planted trees by faith and trusted God for the rain and to keep the hail back and to keep the frost away and so on. It's become a lifestyle to me. And I want to suggest to you it was a lifestyle for Caleb and for Joshua. You see, the Bible says Caleb has a different spirit. What does that mean? Caleb didn't have a spirit of this world. Caleb had a, a godly spirit. Caleb had a spirit of faith. What is faith? Well, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not yet seen. Now, St. Uh, Augustine says, faith is to believe what you cannot see. But the reward of that faith is to see what you believed. Now, you know my story. I've told it to you a hundred times. As a little boy sitting on an anthill in Zambia. That's right. 56 years ago. That's right. I'll tell you why this story is so sweet to me. Because the minister's wife, whose church I was in when I was 17 years old, wrote to me the other day. I nearly fell off my chair. Her name is Shirley. And Shirley, I want to tell you, if you're watching this program, I love you. I haven't seen you for 56 years. <laughs> Most of the people watching this program aren't even 56 years old. I sat on that anthill as a young boy with pimples all over my face, no self-confidence, whatever, Underweight, okay? Never ever made it into any of the teams because I wasn't fast enough, I wasn't strong enough, and I wasn't good enough. Never made it in academics because I wasn't in the A stream. A total dropout, actually. I sat there with my dog. I used to go with my dog every afternoon after school. I was lonely. Sit on the anthill, and I used to dream of speaking to large crowds of people. I used to stand up when nobody was watching. And I used to preach to an imaginary crowd. Can you believe that? And then you know the story if you've watched uh, Ordinary People or even Faith Like Potatoes. What happened when I got saved? 41 years ago, I used to take my pickup and I used to go and park my pickup in the maize field. <laughs> Same thing again. Get on the back of the pickup and I used to preach to the maize. 
And then the Lord would send a gentle wind and all the amazed uh, plants would bow their heads as I prayed the sinner's prayer. Folks, I want to tell you that without faith, you're not going to make it. Simple as that. Okay? And I want to pray a prayer with you that God will increase your faith. You say, Angus, is that, <clears throat> is that scriptural? It actually is. If you look at Luke chapter 17, verse 5, the apostles, the disciples of Jesus said, Lord, please increase our faith so that we can believe you for great miracles. Faith begets faith. Faith is contagious. It's catchy, just like the virus. You want to grow in faith? Get along men of faith, alongside men and women of faith. Keep away from negative people. I really mean that. People are always saying, ah, oh, there's no future for this country. This country is going to the dogs. There's no future for this. And we're all going to be murdered and we're all going to die of the coronavirus. Keep away from those people. They are dangerous. Pray for them, but keep away from them. Get alongside people who say, man, we know this country is about to burst into revival. We're going to see the greatest revival the world's ever seen. This coronavirus will pass and we'll get back again. And people are going to come to Christ by the multitudes. Now you're talking faith. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by this book. I really want to encourage you to do that. Now I'm going to pray for you. And if you would like to pray this prayer with me, please feel free to do it. I'm going to pray very slowly so that you can pray this prayer. I'm not talking about being born again. I'm talking about walking by faith. Some people have been born again for years, but you'd never know it because they can't trust God for anything. And that's why they've got nothing. Let's pray this prayer together. Dear Lord Jesus, today I acknowledge that I have been walking by sight and not by faith. I repent of that and I ask you to forgive me. I pray today, Lord, you will give me a different spirit, a different spirit from the world that you'll give me a spirit like Caleb had, a spirit that will defy the lies of the devil and believe the promises of God. And when you say to me, Lord, I must go this way, that I will not hesitate. And I thank you that the rest of my life will be one walk by faith in Jesus Christ. And my life will be a testimony to many others. I ask this in your precious name. Amen. May God bless you. Goodbye. Thank you for watching today's message by Angus Bucket. We trust that you were blessed. For more information about Shalom Ministries or upcoming events, please visit angusbucket.co.za. Have you downloaded the free Uncle Angus mobile app yet? You can enjoy more messages like this as well as exclusive content direct to your device. See you next time. Goodbye.